Starting meditation was uh, definitely difficult, and I started at a very difficult time in my life. I was in jail at the time, so uh, it was difficult. And, uh, I mean, just because my mind was so much uh, in fear of the future and uh, regret and uh, the past and anger. and um, So it was difficult. Physically, I didn't find it so difficult because I wasn't trying to cross my legs or, or look like I was meditating. I was just sitting <laughs> regular uh, in a, uh, on my bed. I found some benefit immediately. Relaxing into the present moment, bringing our full mindful attention, awareness into our body, into the present time experience of our bodies. Yeah, I saw that uh, when I was paying attention to my breath at my nostrils, that sensation, that it temporarily distracted me uh, from the craziness of my mind and the stress and anxiety and fear of my mental experience into awareness of the physical. So there was an instant uh, relief, even if it was just a temporary, momentary distraction, it felt quite good, uh, quite relieving to not be identified with my thoughts. Feeling the sensations of sitting, the body's contact with the chair, cushion. Feeling your energy, the energy body. Physical sensations in the body, emotional sensations in the body. Growing up with a parent that uh, was practicing and uh, teaching and, um, you know, I was around it. Uh, so on, on some level, it maybe took me a while to start, but I think also on some level I started pretty as, about as young as possible. Even though uh, my teenage years were filled with drugs and crime and uh, suffering, still I started meditating when I was 17. So I was actually quite young, <laughs> and I got very serious about it at 18, 19. My father uh, was a meditator, meditation teacher, and through a phone call, telephone call with him, uh, he said, well, maybe you'd like to try, I was talking about prison and uh, all of my regret and shame, and I was really just in a terrible place. He said, well, maybe you'd like to try meditation. It never, ever occurred to me that it could actually apply to me. I thought it was fine for other people. or But there was something in the suffering of my life's experience at that time uh, and my connection with my father, the trust that I had in him. I, know he, I knew that he wasn't completely full of shit. Partially full of shit, but not completely <laughs> full of shit. Uh, and with enough trust to say, um, okay, I'll try this. And for me, that was my heavenly messenger. And the most important thing, that was the first thing that my father, I had some faith in him. And the most important thing is as I tried meditation, as you tried meditation, if today's not your first time, uh, something happens for us. And whatever that thing that gets us started is, is then verified and we say, oh, this works. And I think that that's what kept me going, is that immediately I saw that uh, when I was paying attention to my breath at my nostrils, that sensation, that it temporarily distracted me uh, from the craziness of my mind and the stress and anxiety and fear of my mental experience into 
awareness of the physical. So there was an instant uh, relief, even if it was just a temporary, momentary distraction, it felt quite good, uh, quite relieving to not be identified with my thoughts. I saw that it was beginning to change my relationship to, for me, what had been the cause of great suffering in my life, my thinking my thinking problem. Perhaps it wasn't so much that I had a drinking problem as much as a thinking problem. Uh, that every time my mind told me to take a drink, I obeyed it. And with meditation came some freedom that said, oh, you don't have to do what your mind is suggesting. It's really, truly just a suggestion. Of course, our attention doesn't stay with the breath when we become re-involved in our thoughts over and over. Much of the initial effort is simply in returning, letting go of the thoughts and coming back to the next breath. Hij weet waarover hij het hier heeft. Hij is van een diepe plek gekomen. Hij weet hoe het leven kan zijn, wat, wat de moeilijke kanten ervan zijn. En ja, boeddhisten zijn soms, ja, als ze er echt in opgegroeid zijn, dan hebben ze ja, misschien bepaalde kanten niet gezien van het leven. En dat spreekt me heel erg aan, dat hij echt is. En misschien wat het meest belangrijkste is, attention of of attitude. Zo so belangrijk. To be friendly, to be kind, compassionate in your relationship to yourself. Not judging ourselves, but gently with an attitude of friendliness coming back to the next breath. Morgen had ik een prettige ervaring. Dat was uh, vooral tijdens de, de, op het moment dat we echt zeg maar, gingen zitten en uh, mediteren. In het begin vond ik het wat lastig om, uh, om echt tot rust te komen en in de zaal te zitten op een fijne manier, met een fijne sfeer en zo. Dat was een beetje lastig voor mij. Oké, okay, je komt direct van buiten, je komt uit de trein, je komt uit een drukke wereld. Dat is even een omschakeling. En juist die meditatie die hielp er heel erg goed bij om eigenlijk te zetten en aanwezig te worden in de, in de groep, in de zaal en in mezelf. Dus dat vond ik inderdaad erg, uh, erg prettig. En, en wat kwam er allemaal in je naar boven? Tijdens de meditatie, dat is een hele goede vraag. Een andere vraag is, wat kwam er niet naar boven? Want wat er dan allemaal passeert, dat is uh, ongelooflijk. Het ding dat ik denk is heel unfortunate in Buddhist circles, waar iedereen soort of puts on their best fake spiritual <laughs> mask and pretends like, you know, I'm a really a pleasant person all of the time. <laughs> Which, I mean, there's something good about being pleasant to each other, but it can be so false, so insincere, so not how we actually are in the world. We, we, we come in here, we put on our best. I'm very spiritual. And it's almost a, like a lie. It's almost like this sort of form of dishonesty rather than, hey, I'm a mess. That's why I'm meditating. That's why I'm seeking uh, healing and health and dharma and awakening because I'm stressed out and uh, I'm suffering in this way and that way and I could really use some support. And one of the big problems of pretending like we have our uh, shit together is that then we don't allow people to really support us and help us and uh, encourage us to grow in the ways that we want to grow. Sometimes there's this great delusion that we can get that uh, meditation is the only real practice. 
and, and that quote from the Buddha, it's not just the silent formal meditation practice. Sometimes it's just spending the day together that is our practice. We don't have to be following the breath in and out or walking slowly or repeating our mantra or anything like that for it to be part of our practice. Right now, mindful listening. Staying present in our bodies, mindful in our bodies, as we interact. Ik heb het me heel lang ook afgevraagd, want um, of dat zo was, want ik heb heel lang inderdaad ook in mijn eentje gezeten en uh, mij afgevraagd van, ja, moet ik niet een sangha hebben, rondgezocht, uh, een beetje gezocht. Ik vond eigenlijk geen plek waar ik me thuis voelde. Toen kwam ik Kim en nog een paar andere mensen tegen uh, op een retraite van Noah Levine en ja, we hadden allemaal een beetje het idee van, oh, we waren allemaal zo eenzaam en nu zijn we niet eenzaam meer. <laughs> En ja, ik begin nu dus de waarde van de Sangha wel, uh, wel echt, te, echt te zien. Ja, het is toch uh, ja, spiritual friendship ja. misschien. Het is ja. juist zo, vaak zo eenzaam in de wereld waar allerlei dingen veel belangrijker lijken dan de boeddhistische waarden, om het zo maar even te noemen. Uh, een wereld die heel snel gaat en gericht is op consumentisme, op hebben, op krijgen, op het nastreven van genot en geluk. En daar continu rennend naar op zoek te zijn, uh, bij wijze van spreken. En dan voelt het vaak heel eenzaam als je er anders over denkt. Of als je het gevoel hebt van er klopt iets niet. En juist door in een sangha te oefenen en met elkaar te spreken over dat soort dingen, valt die eenzaamheid een beetje weg. En daarnaast krijg je ook een enorme motivatiekick om met z'n allen daarmee bezig te zijn. Ja.